Hey everyone, this is Second Run Gaming. I'm Austin, and we are here with Massive Chalice. So, Massive Chalice is a game by Double Fine. Um, it's one of my favorites, and not a lot of people have played it, so I figured that it was a good one to start with on my little channel here. Um, it's a turn based strategy game, much like XCOM or Fire Emblem, so if you're a fan of chess, then you're going to be a fan of Massive Chalice. If you're not a fan of chess, well, on the bright side, you don't have to play it. I do. So you'll be fine. Uh, the first time I played this game, I failed at the credits um, and had to restart because it's not fun. Um, so naturally, I'm going to play it on, ugh, you know, mode. I think I'm going to just play it on hard mode. I've beat it before, but Massive Chalice is really really difficult and I'm not trying to completely embarrass myself right out the gate with one of my first series so we'll just you know I'll fail on hard and it will be even worse somehow so we're gonna do balance start which is um, just enabling a group of heroes that are evenly distributed between three core classes instead of it being completely random that's super helpful because I don't want to get stuck with just one class there are three different classes in massive chalice we'll talk about them a little bit later they're all super cool some of them are a little Ridiculous. Um, I think I'm gonna do it. It's tough. Uh, so you have a bunch of different bloodlines, and you can choose between ones that are really serious and sound very nice and cool, or ones that sound kind of dumb. I'm gonna do both because why not? I'll let fate decide, and we'll see which houses we get. I'm gonna do Iron Man mode as well, so I have one whole save, which will be so much fun and great and just for all of y'all since i've played this before but you haven't i'm going to enable the tutorial just so that you know what it's like anyway we're about to get into it this is massive chalice so we've got a vanguard that's going to make up pretty much the bulk of all of our people so there's it's, this game has permadeath like XCOM or fire emblem so it's super important to kind of keep your people alive but something that's different in massive chalice as opposed to xcom um is that you also basically command houses and those houses are your bloodlines throughout the game um because the game takes place over a couple hundred years so not only do you have to keep your people alive you kind of have to keep your family alive so i'm gonna just randomize it i think callardin Cool. The wolf's lair. Very nice. They seem very cool. Um, oh, yeah. I guess I can just select random houses and no, but I, I like to kind of at least have an idea going into it, so I'm just going to random select from here. And we got the Landia house. They are the court of loafs. They're the breadwinners. Totally serious house. They're here for the bread, and they're ready to go. I accidentally pressed X instead of A, so I guess we'll find out what the other three houses are it's soon. It's taking too long. Patience. Patience. I don't see what patience has to do with this. It should have happened by now. Life keeps to its own timetable, not ours. Oh, it doesn't stop us from trying. Good morning. Your ruler has risen. Rejoice and let bellow the horns of birth. Immortal protector of the nation, progeny of the great bloodlines, master of strategies, eternal conductor, and forger of matrimony. We're here to advise you on how to handle ruling and commanding... Every time. The horns of battle. Fine, we'll have to do this later. The Cadence is attacking. Heroes, jump in. The ruler will be with you shortly! And off they go. We'll explain later. We just need you to take command, because our citizens, understandably, find it hard to trust a giant talking chalice. We are not just a giant talking chalice. But the nation will listen to you, because you're of their blood. Forged from the bloodlines of the great houses. Oh, and one last thing. Unfortunately, the bloodline ritual that was used to create you also bound you to us. So you can never leave the throne. But do not despair. You can still command your heroes. Look inward, and you will find that your mind can follow them anywhere. You see your 
Is so yours, yeah. Right? Yeah? Great. Now, take command and search the area. We've got a massive chalice talking to us. This game is called Massive Chalice because of the massive chalice uh, that is basically giving us all of these directions. So we play as a ruler who's just faceless. Really, it's all about the massive chalice here with their double personality. Uh, it's made by Double Fine, so it's this game has some comedy in it and a really unique art style, which is kind of why I was drawn to it. Um, but yeah, we're in it. We've got five little units, and I'm just gonna start uh, doing the tutorial bits because it's been a couple years actually since I've played this, so this is probably a good thing for me. So we've got Kilingrad, Kalardin. Very hard on the K names. He's got super low fertility, he's sickly and slow. So really our main guy. Um, <laughs> he is the Caberjack class, which is basically like these people that have what appear to be like, uh, what, what are those things called? Like the things in Lord of the Rings where like they hit the door uh, with like a big log. Well, whatever that is, they have like a mini version of that and they hit stuff with it. So they're the melee unit of this game. Very unique, very powerful. Um, they're the tanks basically. So he's our number one dude. We'll get to meet the rest of him in a second. We've got action points. So a hero has two action points to spend during their turn. You can press Y to forfeit all remaining action points for your hero. Why would you even do that? I don't know. I have a tendency to play fast and loose with these games, so I'll probably use all my points and accidentally get myself killed. Um, this is just the thing about movement boundaries. In most games uh, that do like the tactical gameplay, you can dash with both of your action points, but that means you can't do shit afterwards. Um, so we'll see how I'm feeling. Maybe I'll play it slow, stay in the orange there. Uh, maybe I'll just run around like a big old doof. Uh, for the purposes of now though, I'm pretty sure we're definitely just supposed to move. So now we've got Althea de Rapau. Um, she's also slow, as well as nearsighted, but she's brainy and insightful and a reveler, which means that sometimes in missions she'll just be drunk. Um, and her, uh, all of her abilities are kind of fucked and she can't throw really well. She's the alchemist class, so she also has some melee abilities, but her main thing is going to be throwing little potion bombs. Um, so her being a reveler is basically, uh, probably the worst possible thing because it lowers, uh, her ability to throw shit. So perfect. Um, super stoked to have you on board. Next up, we've got Brett Landia, also nearsighted, puny, and and hardy, which is weird, but cool. Honestly, this guy isn't too bad. Um, everybody has usually at least a negative trait and then a couple good ones. He definitely doesn't have some great ones, but since he's a melee guy anyway, his sight doesn't really matter, and it's nice to have a lot of health because these guys are pretty brittle and they'll die pretty dang quick. Also, he's young. So, like, that's cool. We got a young boy. We've also got Tyler Durapau. Oh, shit. So, a fun thing. We'll see once we get up to the big city screen, because it's half XCOM, but this game is also, um, like, half Sim City, like, city management sim game, which is weird, but also part of why I love it. And I'm seeing that we've got four houses instead of five. We've got two Durap house. It's possible that we just got a double from a house, but it's more likely that that just means I only have four bloodlines instead of five because I uh, accidentally didn't pick my own houses for the last three. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, it just it's uh, it just means we got less options, and I'm noticing that I only have one hunter, and his name is Ender, and I love him already, mostly because he's a hunter, and those are my favorite classes in this game. Also, though, that flag with that owl is solid. Plus, he's clumsy, um, so I resonate. Anyway, Ender, welcome to the crew. Let's get going. So 
So a big thing with Double Fine games, at least that I've found, is just that their art style is incredibly unique. So I'm sure that anybody watching this has probably heard of Double Fine before, but if you haven't, they're well known for games like Psychonauts, Brutal Legend, um, they did Broken Age, which was a game that was really big on Kickstarter for a while. Um, in general, all of their games just look really different and play very differently. They all have kind of a cartoonish, jovial feel, so it's like kind of how like Nintendo, you know, like sticks with like the casual vibe. Double Fine very much still has like I don't know, like a childlike uh, graphic like art style that it goes for that I think is really cool. for destroying our nation with its corruption. That's where pawns like you see here come in. Think of them as attack dogs the Cadence creates to spread corruption in the world. So this guy, he's a little seed. These are like the main, like the grunts in Halo. That's these guys. Um, they're the sectoids from XCOM. They're gonna be around all the damn time. They're pretty chill, pretty weak. I'ma run in, punch them. Probably bad. There might be more enemies, but a wolf never surrenders. So yeah. So attacking your hero's chance to hit is shown next to the enemy's hit point flag. Ranged attacks can miss their targets completely. Super great. Melee attacks never miss, but can sometimes glance for greatly reduced damage. Now, when they say sometimes, they do mean most of the time, um, and it's very frustrating, which is why Caberjacks seem like a really cool class, but they kind of run up there and do their own thing and then miss or do like one damage, and it can be pretty frustrating. So each class, much like the characters that they inhibit, have a lot of strengths, but also just as many weaknesses. This game is definitely meant to make you uh, struggle, basically. It's not super, super hard like a Souls game, but it's really punishing. Um, I remember the first time that I played it, uh, I didn't pay attention to any of the city sim elements that we'll probably see in the next episode, um, and I straight up lost because of that completely. Yes, got to mention. Normal humans cannot survive even a single touch from the Cadence, but because the bloodlines of your heroes are attuned to us and have our power flowing through them, they have a fighting chance. I'm just gonna stick with Mr. Killingrad. Um, is his first name Killingrad? Wow. This guy's old, and I don't know if he's really gonna be like the head of his house, but either way, way to start, Killingrad. I like your name, I like your style, please punch the name. Cool. Thank you. A wolf never surrenders. Awesome. I don't know if I saw that right. I'll check on the next turn, but I think Althea might be drunk already in this first mission. If so, Wow, way to get a head start. Proud of you. Also sad. Um, the other thing about alchemists, they're, I think they're drunk too. I think they're both drunk. I think both my alchemists are drunk. This is why I hate Arguably alchemists. The lowliest pawns are more nuisance than this. But if you're going to remember one thing, don't let those runts form a posse. So Keep them apart. we just got hit like when Jacks get together at a tavern. by somewhere over the here. Night of your life and it was by some sort of enemy that took experience from me. Those enemies are probably the worst, um, aside from maybe the, an enemy that we'll meet later that kind of actually drains your life away, like your actual like age, um, which can be pretty bad too. We don't really have any good shots on this guy. I'm gonna see maybe if my bow can, can punch him. That's a pretty decent shot. Nice. Now we don't have to do much. Still gotta do something though. I'm gonna run over here. Yeah, she's drunk. She's just straight up drunk. I'm gonna use a... Eh, I'm just gonna throw a flask. Got... Actually... 78 if I'm there. But I could accidentally hit myself. The thing... So like, if anybody played XCOM, the thing about Alchemists is... I can throw this and it's got a 61% chance to land exactly on that spot, 
But if it doesn't hit that, it's not like I miss. Like, I've still thrown the flask. So it's going to land somewhere else. It could be further away, closer, whatever. So it's like, I kind of want to throw it here because it's a better chance. Like, a way better chance. But it's also super easy to accidentally just go here instead. And then hurt me and potentially kill me. So I'm going to throw it over here. And that could totally still happen. Cool. So that's the alchemist. They're super, super good, very strong, but also just kind of their shit can get um, in the way and accidentally blow up your people if you don't pay attention to them. That guy. Lapses. Cadence cowards. They'd rather stay back and snipe at you than fight up close. Be wary. If your heroes are hit, they may forget some of their combat training. The mind is just as vulnerable as the body. Yeah, so like I lost my entire level by being hit by that guy. So it's like they're they're pretty tough units. They they can be pretty frustrating just cuz if you if you don't take them out quickly, then they just keep draining your experience. I really wish my alchemists weren't drunk on the first, you know, hangout. I'm just going to free throw this just cuz. Great. That that was great. Thank you, Althea. Now, stupidly, um, oh, this is a bad move. I'm gonna do it again. Cool. I figured tutorials probably being chill, probably being really forgiving and nice. So, thank you. So, attack icons. As you select a potential movement location for a hero, helpful icons appear on the enemy's HP flags. Uh, so if I have an arrow, that means that I can perform a ranged attack. If I have a big throwy flask thing, I can throw a flask there. And if my hero is able to see them, it'll have a little eye. I just love the art style. It all seems like like sketches and stuff. Uh, I don't this know. Is a caber it's jack. really cool. They hit things with a caber. Sometimes they hit hard and put things down. Other times they hit not so hard and just knock things out. That's all you're going to say. The simplest way of life there is. Caber jacks. Profound purveyors of violence. Ah, found one of our alchemists. Brilliant mind in a delicate body. Not worth much in a close quarters battle, but they make up for it with their nasty exploding flasks. Just watch out for friendly fire. The explosions are big, so aim well or keep your heroes back. Trust us, you don't want to be on the receiving end of one of their concoctions. So, my hunter can move in stealth? which I completely forgot about and just remembered. It's really nice because then you can't see them, so your hunters are kind of your go-to scouts. Um, so far I've been running with my Caber Jacks and my Alchemists because I've, I've only got one hunter. Um, but I like to usually have two and maybe even sometimes three hunters and then like a Alchemist and one or two Caber Jacks. You only have five people at a time more often than not, so you kind of got to be choosy with what, what you're using and what you're not. Ugh. It's just so satisfying that they have this big lumbering hunk of, like, metal, and they're just like, kapow, and, and the little seeds, they're gone. They just fall. They are cute, so I feel kind of bad, but also if I don't, you know, them or me type of, type of vibes. So yeah, I don't know how much it covered in the original like opening cutscene. I don't think it covered too much, but there's this thing called the Cadence that has basically like threatened to take over the entire world and you are doing everything that you can to make that not happen. Um, and so you manage this little like region that um, you're trying to protect from the Cadence and the Massive Chalice is, is helping you do that. So we'll probably get to that nice glancing blow. Uh, once we're done with this mission, we'll be able to get introduced to um, just kind of what the rest of the world looks like. Um, it's pretty cool. I love the art style. It's really nice. It feels very daunting, um, which I like. And hey, all of us survived. Killingrad got his level back. Well done. Well done. I knew you'd have a knack for this. Oh, thanks. Yeah, for, you know, that tutorial mission, I, I would have been really worried if I had lost someone already. I think, like, the the, the danger of, of me uh, playing games on this channel that I've already played before and beaten is, like, I'm showing them to you guys because I love them 
and supposedly that means I'm good at them. Not true. So, you know, we'll see. I might beat it again. I might not. That muck you see surrounding us is the Cadence. It's what created the pawns, corrupted our lands, and is slowly tightening on us like a noose. But we do have one advantage. Thanks to several enchanted materials that make up our body, we've been endowed with certain powers. One of them being a way to cleanse the Cadence from this world. It's really quite a miraculous process, wherein we harness the properties of- The thing is, it takes a long time for us to charge up for this. A long time. All of the heroes you just commanded in battle will be long gone when we're finally ready. With all that time still ahead, we need you to protect us. You will take charge of the nation, command its citizens worthy of becoming heroes, and ensure that the Cadence does not reach the capital. Now let's check out that keep you just saved. Alright, so we've got our first keep. It's in this tiny little holdfast here in the Cinderlands. This is the main central area. And then as you can see, there are other holdfasts throughout the region, some that are much closer to the Cadence, some that are kind of on the inland, which is a little bit safer. The Keeps. Bloodline forgers of the nation. The stonemasons did good work here. I'll thank them later. Here, you will appoint one hero as a regent, and one as a partner. And the more experience they have, the more they'll pass on to their children. That goes for traits and personalities, too. Everything's game. And keep in mind, assigning heroes to keeps retires them from combat. You can't have one foot at home and one in the battlefield. So yeah, assigning a regent is pretty tough stuff because whoever we put on there, on the bright side, they get to live like their whole life and have a bunch of kids and do their own thing and command a region, but we can never take them into battle. So I was trying to focus on going with James and Kilingrad in that last fight just because they both had low fertility. And the big thing about having a keep, especially in vaguely medieval times, is that like our entire base of citizens and units and heroes, or what they're called at least in this game, because there are standard citizens too, is based on these lines continuing on and having a bunch of kids that can either become warriors or researchers or any other job that we need filled to, you know, fight back the cadence. So in order to appoint a regent, we can pretty much pick anybody that we want. It's just kind of thinking about who's going to make the most sense. So I like to sort it by fertility, just because that makes the most sense from uh, a, a baby standpoint. Um, and also paying attention to age as well, because you kind of want your regents to be there for a long time. You don't want to have to keep cycling through. And I don't want to take somebody into battle that I'm going to have to then not... Um, not use later because I have to appoint them to the region when I've already fought with them a couple times. The other thing though is that their class is going to be passed down. So if you want a bunch of alchemists, you want to appoint an alchemist. If you want a caberjack, then you want to appoint a caberjack. If you want a hunter, which is what I want, because I love my little bow boys, Legolas, my crush since forever. Um, it's kind of who you want. So it's tough because it's like, we've got Kurt Hartman, Hart, Kurt Hartman, Hartmanjuring. Kurt Hartmanjuring. We could appoint Kurt Hartmanjuring. Uh, his traits are puny, nimble, quick study. His personality is faint hearted and tranquil. Now that your regent is no. appointed, it's time to I didn't to do that. Stop it. Although this isn't an arrangement out of love, who knows? Maybe it'll turn into that. We've seen it happen. Personality, traits, experience, they're all important here. But just because this is an arrangement of necessity doesn't mean you should reduce these heroes to a pile of numbers either. They deserve better than that. So naturally, we're not supposed to reduce these guys to just a pile of numbers, but I am going to reduce them to a pile of numbers as far as picking my region because I'm here to win and, and I'm not here to make friends. So, uh, Kurt's pretty okay. He doesn't have a lot of strength, and that those traits can be passed on. Um, but he's got better dexterity, and he gets a faster XP gain. Um, that being said, he's faint-hearted, so if someone else dies in battle, he's weaker. But he's pretty accurate too. In general, like that's that's a really really good make for a hunter. You don't need him to be super strong anyway. That being said, Ender's my boy. Um, 
we fought with Ender. We love Ender. But, uh, <laughs> Ender doesn't have the best traits for a hunter. Um, hunters are all about having dexterity, uh, and Ender doesn't have dexterity. Um, Ender also gets decreased max HP, which doesn't really matter for him, but for any of his kids can kind of suck. Uh, it also means we'll be having a lot of boys if Ender's our regent. Um, but he has a rebel personality, so personality traits can run counter to those of parents and trainers. Um, that doesn't really matter if he's having kids. Um, he does have the Avenger trait, so if someone dies, he does become um, stronger. So that's cool. I don't know if we have any other hunters uh, except for Susie Heart Mandering. Uh, who's got long lifespan, increased dexterity, decreased max HP, but true hit chance is lower than predicted. So that's... Oh, that sucks, actually. Susie's not in the running. We're not going with Susie. So it really... It's tough. It comes down to Ender or... Kurt. Man. I don't know why I played this game, because now I have to choose. And I really like Ender... But Kurt has really good traits, and it's gotta, it's gotta be Kurt. All right, Mr. Heart Mandering, Heart Mandering. I don't like your last name, Kurt, but we're gonna do it for the vine, so it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, okay, so now that we've picked our regent, um, we basically find them a co-regent. I forget their name. Um, so we have to then take yet another character out of our pool um to see who's gonna who's gonna partner up with kurt to be our first little dual keep so we've got amanda mcmorty who's an alchemist so they have a trick shot that means the class um is going to be like an amalgamation of a hunter and an alchemist so they have a couple different abilities they're still primarily um a hunter but um, trick shot can be cool. Enforcer can also be pretty cool. It's just a caberjack and a hunter put together. I'm kind of leaning towards doing that since Kurt is already kind of weak. I'm hoping that will maybe balance that out, but it kind of depends on the partner that they have. So let's check out, uh, definitely not. It's, it's, we don't have too many choices here because we're pretty early in the game. So I'm gonna check with Sarisa and Katrin and see what they have as far as details. So Katrin is also nimble, but is also sickly, so that doubles down on... I forget what fucking Kurt has anyway, but good to know. Rebel, Cocky, and Pack Hunter. Not great. Not great. We'll see, because so their kids can get the Rebel trait too. Guys, I'm looking at Ender again. It's a bad move. It could potentially ruin the whole game because our our Heartmander guy is better. But say la vie. On the bright side, if it does fuck up our whole game, I have somebody else to blame who's not me. So Ender, you're our regent for better or worse. Uh, I love you. I love you a lot. We're definitely not going to go with Katrin, because she also is sickly, which means they're both sickly, and so is Sarisa, and this is a problem. <laughs> so Amanda McMorty has increased movement and increased uh, XP, um, decreased intuition though, um, and well, their true hit chance is probably higher, which is pretty good. That means they're likely more accurate than it says they are. Definitely not Simone, decreased XP and decreased accuracy kind of really sucks. And then that's pretty much everybody. So I'm gonna go with Amanda. We're gonna have trick shots and and we're just gonna see how that goes. Ender happy return. Amanda. Let's give the newlyweds some privacy. Do the thing and make us proud. It's a lot to take. And I hope that we don't it, lose. Or your mind will become as cracked as our body. You'll be fine. Now then. Please join us back at the capital so we can show you some of your other responsibilities. Awesome. So this has been Massive Chalice. 
the first little episode. Um, next episode, we're going to get more kind of into the actual like city building aspects of this game because it's weirdly like it's got a lot of city sim and time management stuff that goes on in between the battles. There's really only a battle every 30 or 40 years. That goes by super fast in the game, but it's weird um, that there's a bunch of other aspects too. It's not just like fighting to fighting to fighting. So next episode, we probably won't fight at all, but we will get to see some cool things. Um, anyway, thanks for tuning in and see you next time.